Apple fam and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications, and let's get started. Okay, this couch is like way too way big. big. Like, look how much room I have. I don't know what to do and I feel really far away. Okay, this is a little better. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about my wedding and do a little bit of a recap and talk about everything I would change about my wedding, everything I didn't like, all that stuff. I feel like a lot of people who are engaged in planning weddings could really use this because then you know like what you should watch out for for your wedding and things you could pay attention to. I'm going to preface this video by saying after my wedding, I literally wouldn't change anything. I was obsessed with every little detail about my wedding. I was so happy. Like if anything went wrong, I knew nothing about it on my wedding day because everyone was so good about making sure I was just happy, having a good time and everything I wanted happened. That being said, now that it's been like a month later, I look back and I'm like, I wouldn't change anything because it was perfect and I think the day went really well. Of course, things are gonna go wrong on your wedding day and you just have to be relaxed and be okay with that. But you know, if I could go back and change things, this is what I would. But like, I'm not saying I hated my wedding. These are just like minor details that don't even really matter. It's just things that I thought of that maybe it could help you guys. Basically, I'm trying to disclaimer this and just say that I'm not like mad about things that happened at my wedding. I loved my wedding. So I'm gonna start with stuff at my reception. Well, actually, I'm just gonna start from the beginning of the day and kind of go, yeah, let's just do an order of like order of events. That sounds pretty good. Okay, first thing that I would have maybe changed is the time I got married. So I had two wedding days. Friday was my temple religious ceremony. So that was family only. Then I had my reception with a ring ceremony and that was like close family and friends. So on Friday, I, for some reason, just was like, oh, let's do the earliest time, which was 1030 in the morning. But it was in Kansas City. That's a three hour drive from where I live, which means a lot of my family had to drive three hours super early in the morning, which I'm pretty sure everyone ended up just getting a hotel because it was snowing that night. But I just didn't think about how inconvenient that is. Plus I had to wake up at 5 a.m. to start getting ready so that I could like, you know, have have time to do my hair, do my makeup, all that, because I had to be at the temple at 9 a.m. Yeah, that was a little rough. But also at the same time, it was really nice because after the temple, we had a little luncheon and then we were like done by like three o'clock. So me and Dal were back at our hotel and had the rest of the night to just like relax, take it all in and all that fun stuff on our wedding night. It was nice to not be like midnight back in our hotel and ready to go to bed because no one wants to just go to bed on their wedding night, you know? That's pretty much it for the temple day. So moving on to like the reception. At my reception, we had bride and groom rooms and I was super excited because I thought I'd be able to go into my bride room and like hide away from all the like little kids, pretty much from everyone except for like my mom and then my bridesmaids. That's the only people I wanted in my bridal room. And then also in the groom room, I was hoping that all the boys could go get ready in there and hang out and like talk to each other. But um, it didn't really work out that way. So the groom room kind of turned into like an ironing room and like everyone was just like in and out of there. And there were these two big doors and they were just open and they were kind of supposed to be closed so that Dallin could go in there and get ready and like all the grooms could be in there but I do have to keep in mind that I asked everyone in my family to like be there at 10 a.m. and to help get ready and then they'd have to like also it was an hour away so they'd also have to get ready there so I don't know there were two bathrooms downstairs that I was hoping everyone would use but everyone kind of ended up coming in the bride and groom room and if I could have changed it I kind of wish it would have just been me because it was kind of a lot but also in the moment I was just so excited I didn't really care it's not like the biggest deal in the world like I'm not offended by anyone like if you're watching this video and you were in the room like I'm not offended it actually ended up being really fun but like my ideal of what I thought would happen wasn't what happened but that's just kind of how weddings are and you have to flow with it and just be happy with it but um, I'd say if you also have a bride or groom room to like state that beforehand because obviously I don't want to kick anyone out like anyone who was in there getting ready I was like okay whatever like we're all sisters we're all cousins like everyone I ended up actually like halfway through getting ready I ended up inviting like all the girls like all my cousins everyone in there because I was like you know what everyone's already in here let's just make it a party but you know if I wanted it to just be me and my bridesmaids I should have said something way beforehand so if you want that then make sure to like set that standard ahead of time well, after we get ready is pictures so we took pictures and we were taking the bridal party pictures and I mean not to call anyone out but one of my brother-in-laws wore a 
like bright brown belt like it was like this color brown not even like a nice deep brown that could pass as like a black one of my brothers was wearing a brown belt and I couldn't tell because it was so deep brown but the colors were literally our color scheme was burgundy black all the guys were wearing all black and then one of them had a bright orange belt I mean it was brown but it looked orange and like it didn't like ruin anything but every time I look at that picture that's all I can look at is like the bright orange belt and yeah so I just wish I would have checked everyone's outfits I'm not really mad about it I'm not gonna be like why did you do that I feel like I have to justify everything because I feel like I'm just being mean to like people who made this stuff happen anyway I would just suggest that you check all of your bridal parties outfits and make sure that everyone has everything because two of my bridesmaids forgot their corsages or was it just one I don't remember I just wish like you know they had them so Definitely like double check with everyone that they have everything and that everyone's wearing the right thing before you take pictures. So next up is actual ceremony. So we walked down some stairs and I had someone fix my train before I walked down the stairs. My train looked beautiful down the stairs, but then I got to the aisle and if you guys watch the live stream or the wedding video, you can see that my train starts to crumble up and the actual like aisle runner starts to crumble up and then one of my family members like grabbed it and stopped it. So I wish that I would have thought about this. I should have had my aunt who was like upstairs helping everyone walk go down the stairs and like help my train once I got to the bottom of the stairs because that's when everyone like saw the back of my train. Um, it's not the biggest deal in the world but I kind of wish it was like all perfect walking down the aisle but it happens. Um, also with walking down the aisle I wish I would have practiced like my face walking down the aisle obviously you want to be in the moment so just whatever emotion you're feeling like show it on your face but um i didn't really think about like what should i do because you think that you'll be natural and act natural and just be in the moment but there's like a hundred people standing there staring at you plus i knew my live stream was going with five thousand people watching live and my husband is standing at the aisle and I'm just all emotional and all my best friends and my family and I didn't know what to do and there are cameras on me and um, my photographers told me beforehand just remember to smile because brides always forget to smile so I like was so nervous that all I could think about was smile so I had this really awkward look on my face because I felt like I was about to cry but I was also smiling and usually when I cry I'd like cover my face but I couldn't because I was like being escorted by my dad and holding my flowers so I kind of wish I would have thought about okay when I'm filled with emotions like do something about it and don't look awkward I just be in the moment and just let whatever happens happens so next up would be our grand entrance so after we left our ceremony we went outside and took pictures just me and Dallin and then we came in and I was so cold and in such a rush that I literally just like peeked my head in and I was like dad announce us let's go so I was like freezing so he just grabbed the mic and announced us he actually ended up announcing us as Mr. and Mrs. McGee, which is my maiden name, and not Forsyth. So um, I'm sure my dad's embarrassed about that. I'm not like mad at him or anything. I honestly thought it was funny because everyone was like, did you even know that happened? I was like, no, I had no idea because I was like so cold. I was like, I gotta go inside. If I could go back, I probably would have planned out the grand entrance a little better. So Niall was my DJ, who's my brother-in-law. I should have texted him and been like, hey, we're gonna come in in about one minute, um, just get ready. And then we could have had him like done a whole thing. Then people could have gathered because no one knew we were coming because we didn't like say okay the bride and groom are coming in like two minutes everyone be ready and then we went right into dinner so while me and Dallin were taking pictures everyone else got in line and started eating dinner we did a sweetheart table which is like very classic that's like what everyone does but I would actually suggest not doing a sweetheart table you can still have one and you guys can go sit at it like later but I barely got to eat and I was actually like really annoyed by this but like I love my friends and family who came to talk to me but I was getting like so aggravated because I was literally starving I was cold and I was hungry and I wasn't left alone long enough to take like two bites in a row I would take a bite and then someone would walk up and hug me and be like oh my gosh congrats how's it going which we actually were gonna have a time for that so our plan was we were gonna say hey the bride and groom are gonna eat for 10 minutes so leave them alone and then I could eat like really fast and then we were gonna get up and walk from table to table and then we'd be able to say hi to everyone which I was really excited about this plan but I guess I didn't like tell enough people so I wish what we would have done is went and got our food and went into the bride room and ate in private and then we could have had some alone time and we could have ate our food because I was so excited about the Kidoba queso but I barely got to eat any because like yes I want to talk to my guests and I'm so excited I was actually so stoked to go talk to everyone but I ended up not being able to talk to everyone because 
people kept coming up to our sweetheart table talking, 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 but like we had a set time for that and it didn't happen. So then we didn't end up having time to get up and go talk to everyone. So I didn't even get to talk to like everyone who was there. That was kind of sad for me. And honestly, that's like one of the main things I would have changed. It ended up being a nice night and I wasn't like super mad. So speaking of that, we went right from dinner to cake and I guess there were napkins and plates there for me and Dallin, but someone moved them. I don't really know. Just make sure that there are napkins and plates ready for you because I, my plan was, you know, shove it in Dallin's face and then I'll have a napkin because he's going to shove it in my face. But he shoved it in my face and then I'm like sitting there with stuff all over my face not knowing what to do because there were no napkins. So then I had to use one of those really nice napkins. Like it was like a decoration napkin and then we went from that into the dance party and I really really wish I would have organized this better because I am a party person I get FOMO so bad I love to dance and just have a good time I was so excited about the dance party and I ended up missing a lot of my favorite songs because I ended up like going to talk to people because I didn't have that time earlier to talk to people and then everyone wanted to take pictures which of course I want to do that. What I would suggest and what I wish I would have done is set a time to take pictures like not with the photographer but like with your guests like the iPhone pics in your little photo booth spot. So we had our arbor set up. It was super cute but I didn't even get pictures with like a lot of my friends who were there and I'm like dang like I don't have a single picture with you for my wedding. A lot of people did come up and get in line and take pictures but I wish I would have been like, okay, like for the next 30 minutes, we're gonna take pictures. Also, this isn't something I would change. I really liked it, but I just thought I'd mention it. We did a fake grand exit. Is that what it's called? A grand exit? I don't know. But we have the sparklers and instead of doing it when we were actually leaving, we faked it. Um, one, because my photographers had to get back to their baby and they didn't want to stay all night. And two, because then people who want to leave can leave early, like the non-partiers, and then you could stay as late as you want and party with like your best friends and your family. So that's what ended up happening. And we all got to party until we were literally tired. And I was like, okay, we're leaving, bye. And then when we wanted to go, it wasn't like this huge ordeal of like, okay, everyone gather. Cause we just were like, okay, bye, we're leaving. <laughs> so that was really nice. Like I said, I love my wedding day and everything went super well. I'd also give the advice to know, as I said, like not everything is gonna go right. Things are gonna happen drama is going to happen and hopefully no one will tell you about it until after your wedding because that's what happened with me. I didn't know about any of the drama that happened that week until like after my honeymoon. So that was really great. Be in the moment and be excited. The whole point of a wedding is so that you can marry the love of your life and you just got to remember that. So as long as I was with Don, I was happy. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have other wedding suggestion videos like about this, like planning or whatever, then leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to turn on those post notifications and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Uh, is that all the things I'm supposed to say? Oh, buy the merch. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.